Animals are by far the most complex and most diverse living things. On the earth, animals are found almost everywhere we look. We find them flying in the air above us, burrowing in the soil beneath us, and filling the oceans with an unbelievable variety of strange and wonderful creatures. In spite of their great diversity, all members of the kingdom Animalia, from the simplest to the most complex, share the same basic characteristics. First, all animals are multicellular, meaning their bodies are composed of many cells. Second, the cells of all animals have a nucleus and are surrounded by only a thin cell membrane because they lack the thick cell walls found in other multicellular organisms. A third characteristic is that all animals obtain food by ingestion. This means that in order to survive, animals must eat other organisms, either whole or by the piece. The main reason animals are such complex creatures is that they can be composed of hundreds of types of cells from which many highly organized structures are formed. For example, the specialized cells of animals are almost always found grouped together in organized layers called tissues. And tissues are the materials from which complicated animal organs are constructed. Furthermore, Animal organs work together as organ systems to perform complex tasks such as making and circulating blood and digesting food. With well over a million species of animals in the world, biologists have found it helpful to classify them into smaller groups according to which traits they share. These traits can include such things as body shape, the number of tissue layers they possess, the presence or absence of certain organs, and so forth. One of the most basic ways of classifying animals is into vertebrates, animals which have backbones, and invertebrates, animals which do not have backbones. Beyond those two very broad classifications, Animals are classified into a particular large classification group, or phylum, depending on their traits. All the vertebrates are classified into just one phylum. However, there are about 29 phyla of invertebrates. This reflects the greater diversity of this group, and the fact that invertebrates make up 95% of all the animals on Earth. After an animal has been classified into a certain phylum, other traits will determine into which particular class within the phylum it belongs. Then, into which order within that class, which family within the order, which genus within the family, and finally, which species within the genus. Classification has proven to be a valuable tool because it provides a common framework that is used by biologists around the world. For without this framework, accurate communication would be impossible. Additionally, through classification, important biological patterns have been revealed that have led to a much better understanding of how animals evolved and how they are related to one another. In the survey of the animal kingdom that follows, we will begin with the phylum of sponges. Of all the animal phyla, sponges are considered to be the simplest primarily because they do not have tissues and so lack nerves and muscles. As a result, sponges follow pretty uncomplicated lives attached to rocks and logs. The scientific name for the sponge phylum is periphera, which means poor bearers. They were given this name because all sponges are perforated with countless tiny pores, and this is why their dried skeletons absorb water so well. 
living sponges continually take water in through their pores and then expel it back outside through a much larger opening. During this process, called filter feeding, special cells inside the sponge's body trap tiny organisms that it uses for food. The second simplest phylum of animals are the stinging animals. These beautiful creatures include jellyfish, corals, and sea anemones. Like sponges, all stinging animals live in water, but they are much more complex than sponges and have two basic tissue layers. They are called stinging animals because they have stinging cells on their tentacles, which they use for defense, for trapping prey, and taking it into their mouths. Food is digested in a large cavity inside their bodies, and waste materials are expelled back to the outside through their mouths. Another unusual thing about the stinging animals is that they have a circular or radial body plan in which the segments are arranged like spokes of a wheel. So although they have an upside and a downside, they have no front or back. Nearly all stinging animals exhibit two distinct life forms. Most sea anemones, corals, and jellyfish spend part of their lives attached to solid objects as muscular tubes called polyps. And during the other part of their lives, the same individuals are able to swim freely as umbrella-shaped medusae, like those seen here. After the stinging animals, the next most complex group are the worms, and there are about seven different phyla of them. The very simplest worms are called flatworms. Most of them live in the oceans, but some live inside of other animals where they are dangerous parasites. Flatworms possess three basic tissue layers, a primitive nervous system, and a single body opening through which pass both food and wastes. All the other phyla of worms, such as the large marine worm seen here, possess a digestive tube that runs through a fluid-filled body cavity called a coelom. The digestive tube begins at the mouth and ends at a second opening, the anus, through which wastes are expelled. Although some worms use gills for obtaining oxygen, most simply absorb it through their moist skins. Earthworms, like those seen here, are members of the most advanced phylum of worms, called the segmented worms, because their bodies are composed of repeating ring-like segments. Earthworms feed off of decaying organic material in the soil. They have both brains and blood as well as a number of simple organ systems. After the worm phyla, the next most complex group of organisms are the mollusks, the soft-bodied animals. Two of the most advanced mollusks are the octopus and the cuttlefish. Both live in salt water and are considered to be highly intelligent animals. The snail seen here is a fairly typical mollusk. It has three basic tissue layers, a coelom, and well-developed organ systems. The snail's head and sense organs are connected directly to the large muscular foot it uses for locomotion. Many of their internal organs are located within their shells, but in times of danger, there is still enough room inside their shells for the rest of their body. Snails and slugs possess a rough, rasp-like feeding tongue to shred plant material before it is ingested. Snails are also hermaphrodites, meaning they possess both male and female reproductive organs. Nonetheless, they still seek out mates to fertilize their eggs. The next phylum, the arthropods, or joint-legged animals, is the largest animal phylum. In fact, there are more species of arthropods than are found in all the other phyla combined. Some of the most familiar arthropods are spiders, bees, 
ants and butterflies. All arthropods share the same characteristics. They all have paired jointed appendages, such as legs, antennae, and mouth parts. The bodies of all arthropods possess a hard outer covering called an exoskeleton that provides protection for their internal organs and gives the ends of their muscles a place to attach. The muscles of arthropods are highly efficient and they have extremely well-developed sense organs. They have both simple and compound eyes for obtaining visual information and antennae to give them information about touch sensations, odors, tastes, and even sounds. One reason that arthropods have been such a successful group of animals is that they have efficient methods for reproduction in which fertilization occurs inside the body of the female. Biologists think that mollusks, segmented worms, and arthropods followed one major path of evolutionary development, while a much different path was followed by the last invertebrate group we will look at, the spiny-skinned animals, or echinoderms. All echinoderms, such as starfish, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers, dwell in salt water. Echinoderms possess calcium-containing spines that link together to form an internal framework called an endoskeleton. They also possess a unique system that pumps water through canals inside their bodies. This system is used to control the thousands of tiny tube feet, seen here, which echinoderms use for both locomotion and for prying open the shells of mollusks, such as clams and oysters, upon which they feed. The last and the most advanced phylum of animals are the chordates. Almost all chordates are vertebrates, animals with backbones and highly developed organ systems. Vertebrates are the largest animals and they come in several basic classes, such as cartilage fish, bony fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. At some point in their lives, all animals in the chordate phylum exhibit three basic traits. First, like this shark, they all will possess gill slits. Second, they all will have a strong rod of cartilage called a notochord to support their bodies. And third, they all will have a tubular nerve cord within their backs. In most types of chordates, such as human beings, the gill slits and notochord exist only when they are embryos and are not present in adults. As we have seen, the world of animals is much more diverse and complex than we could ever have imagined. And it is truly amazing to think about the many remarkable and often beautiful ways that the bodies of animals have developed to be able to survive in the sea, on the land, in the soil, and in the sky.